Hello, 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 and welcome to a brand new episode of the Uncovering Greatness podcast. As always, I am your co-host, Sully, and today I am joined by Nicole Mitchell. Nicole Mitchell is the lead processor and an international processor, and basically what that means is she helps you get out of the way of you, um, which I think that everybody on the planet needs, but hey, that's just me. Um, Nicole, how are you doing? How goes it? I'm good. How are you today, Sully? Good, good, good. Thank you very much. Um, interesting. I feel like we've been, especially for this time of year, we've been really touching on these topics because it's it's weird what happens at this time of year to people. Um, and I think to today's episode, we're basically talking around, and you you'll be able to explain it way better than I can. Uh, but we'll be talking about identities and the games that people play during the festive season. So, mm-hmm. what is an identity? <laughs> Uh, and so the the most important thing to be aware of is I, we have thousands of identities that we wear. Thousands. Thousands, yeah. So so an example of an identity is just different hats that we wear in our life. So you know we we for example I have a mother identity. I have a daughter identity. I have a businesswoman identity. I have a um, want of like a church going identity, okay. I have a dog training identity, yeah. I have um, a teacher identity, I have a sort of being taught I, like a learner identity. Uh-huh. There's so many different identities we have and some of those identities serve us and some of them don't. Okay. So what most people are not aware of is they're not aware of the identities that they go into. So I've just given you ones, like examples of ones that are you can associate with. Mm. So we can also look at I have a love identity and a hate identity, for example. Okay. So love would be connection to where I connect to people, hate is distance from, I distance myself from people. Okay. So they're not good or bad. They all just have a place. So for example, if we talk my love identity, it's my connection to identity. Okay, okay. so you want to connect to I something, to connect someone. To something, someone. So I need to use that identity, let's say, at home with my family. Okay. That's a really good example of where I should be using it. Yeah. But then I may have my hate identity that theoretically I should use from when I'm walking down a dark alley and it's like I want to distance myself from the strangers that are following <laughs> me. <laughs> um, and I need to be aware of when I'm using those identities. Okay. The problem is, is that people will use their hate identity when they get home because on their way home they got frustrated in traffic and they just want to distance themselves from taxis and rush hour and you know all those things and they get home and they're still in their hate identity okay and then they distance themselves from their family family and Mm. the very people they're trying to connect to and so at christmas time leave time holiday time vacation time we see all these crazy identities start to come out because people are like i'm done with work i just want to go on holiday So they're already in their holiday holiday identity, identity. and it's not even December, (laughs) we're in the middle of November, (laughs) and (laughs) and they're already in their vacation or their holiday identity, and they're planning their holiday, and they're packing their clothes, Mm -hmm. and they're talking about all the stuff they're going to do, or or maybe it's a Christmas identity, you know, for people that really celebrate Christmas. So they've already started watching Christmas movies, they've already started baking Christmas things, (laughs) You know, they've, done, they've got all their Christmas shopping done, they've, you know, planned their meals, what they're going to, who's coming, yeah. where they're going, what who's they're going to do, what? who's cooking what, and they've already, and everyone's going, dude. Sure. <laughs> 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 I'm still work identity. <laughs> and, and so it's, and those identities are not wrong, and they're not bad. Okay. But when I'm wearing my Christmas happy, let's play Christmas carols identity, let's watch Christmas movies, let's bake gingerbread houses and Mm. that sort of thing at work in the middle of November, it becomes bad. 
Okay. So I need to be aware of what identity I am wearing when. Because the identities on their own are not bad. But it's when we are not aware of them and we use them at the wrong time. So what you say is managing the identity. Uh, well, so, so you have to get the awareness first. <laughs> yes, you got, got you. it. <laughs> got you. you need to be aware of what identity you're wearing. So most people today are not aware of the identities they go into. Yeah. So especially around, like we, you were talking, you know, holiday season. So I'm now wearing the, I'm the wife, I'm the mom, mm. I'm the leader of my family. And I go to Christmas lunch with the rest of my family. And my parents are there, my mom, my dad, mm -hmm. whatever. And I suddenly go from the wife and the mom identity into the little girl mm. identity because that's how mom and dad treat me. Yeah. And then I, without even knowing that's what's happening. Zero awareness to it. I have no awareness and I'm doing things that I don't normally do my my family that I live with, my children and my husband think I'm suddenly like, who is this person? What's going on? I've never seen you do that. Like, what happened? Yeah. yeah. And then I'm not even aware that's what I've gone into. I don't like it. Or I do like it or whatever. And I find myself doing things that I wouldn't normally do. And then I don't like myself when I, by the time I get home, but I'm still doing those things and I can't understand why. Because mm. I mean, like the daughter, like, like you said, the whole, you know, you have the mom, the leader of the family, the, you know, you have that identity, mm -hmm. then you meet up, then now you're with your parents and you go into the daughter identity. You may like that because let's just say your parents spoil you and they treat you. So now you, it, it, it happens unconsciously. Consciously. No, unconsciously. Okay, so it happens unconsciously. Because it's an automatic. I mm. just I see my parents and it's like, oh, mom, dad, yeah. dad. Yeah, dad. So I click into that. I'm in this identity. Can you have both identities operating at the same sort of time and at the same level? So like the mom identity and the daughter identity. So generally, there's one that we go into that becomes a prominent one. Ooh. But what happens is I'll be this one and then I'll switch into the, so I'll go into the, the daughter identity and then my kids walk into the room, I go into the mom identity. Okay. And generally that's actually what happens and that's what creates a lot of conflict in families because I'm switching between identities and you're asking me for a decision and I don't know if I'm making the decision as a daughter or as a mom. And everyone's having this conversation and my kids come in and I'm trying to, and because it's an automatic and it's a subconscious, I'm not even aware of it. And then I'm going, well, I'll think about it. And you're like, what do you mean you'll think about it? Like, <laughs> of, of course you should be coming to the ice skating show with us. And you, you're, you're like, and, and then you have all these thoughts of, as the daughter, mom and dad will pay for me. Oh, shit, who's going to pay for my kids? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, that makes so much sense. <laughs> and and yeah, then we're, yeah. we're kind of going, well, are they going to pay? Am I going to pay? Is it? Mm. And, and we kind of go, well, hold on. And, and then we're not sure. And like, why am I thinking like this even? Mm. My parents and, will pay for me. Is your parents going to pay for you? <laughs> and, and so all these, and these things start to happen without us even realizing mm. it's because it's a subconscious thing. And people don't have the awareness that they change identities. So they don't even one, know what identity they even are before they get there. And then two, they change, you know, because mm. suddenly the sister arrives and you're now, I'm now not the mother or the daughter, I'm the wearing my sister identity. Oof. Well, it's a whole different. And, and it's like, well, how come you did, and you know, you can see it playing out in all these Christmas movies that yeah. <laughs> everybody watches. But yeah. the reality is, is that that's what happens in most people's homes. Because, mm, I mean, like, usually those movies start with everybody in their own homes, doing their own thing. Then they all come to one main home and all of a sudden you just see absolute chaos. chaos. <laughs> because nobody knows, who, everybody's, everybody's identities are taken over, whatever identity it is has taken over and nobody's really sure what's happened. And it's that's interesting because I'm like I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, so I know that I've went into a few identities during this during this um 
especially like during the festive season. But people call that assimilation, right? So then I like, hey, I just heard the word like <laughs> yesterday. So funny enough, I saw a video where a guy, it's a clip where he does, it's like he speaks to three different people, but he speaks to them in three different ways. Okay. And I was like, and they were like, oh no, but that's just assimilation. And I was like, interesting. Bring, up, bring this up on the podcast. Because I don't, based off what she's saying, is like we all have these identities, right? So I know mm -hmm. how to be with you, and I know how to be, like how I am with you is very different to how I am with Michaela. Correct. And how I am with Barry, it's different identities. Yep. So how do we gain awareness to the identities? So the one thing is name it. So have Ooh. the awareness of, you know, this is my grumpy identity. <laughs> like when I wake up in the morning, this is like my super grumpy identity. Like stay away. <laughs> like, <laughs> so this is my grumpy morning identity. <laughs> like, so, so you can name your identities and, and, you know, you can have some fun with them. Mm. But just be aware of the behaviors of them because some of them serve you and some of them don't. So my grumpy morning identity doesn't really serve me. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But my family are all aware of it. And they go, oh, are you wearing your grumpy morning identity? <laughs> are you grumpy mom? You, you know, and it's those kind of things that by doing that, you have the awareness and you name it. And then you kind of go, oh, I don't want to be grumpy mom. I want to be happy mom. Okay. okay cool. Right. Let's, let's shift. Yeah. And the moment you spot it, you can shift, but most people are busy fighting. I'm not grumpy. <laughs> How dare, like, who do you think you are? Called? Have you seen you? <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> what are you talking about? And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're so busy fighting and justifying and denying that they don't actually stop and go, oh, yeah, I actually do wear that identity. Mm. So, like, so, so you said that identities are neither good nor bad, they become bad when there's a lack of awareness and how you, how you basically use them, right? Well, lack of awareness, lack of awareness. to them, because mm. if I'm wearing my grumpy mom identity and I come to work... That was now what was where I was going with this, because I was like, because yeah, because you now go to work, you come into the workplace, you grumpy mom there. But now I start telling, I start treating everybody like they're my kids. Because I'm grumpy mom and I'm grumpy and how, like, you know, you need to listen to me. Like, and without even thinking, I start treating everybody like they're my children. And everyone's thinking, what the heck? Who, you know? Who? Like, what was in your cereal this morning? Yeah, what happened? Who peed on your pancakes? Those kind of things. But, and so it is, and having that awareness of that's what I'm actually wearing, now I, can, I have a choice to change it. Do, do I want to be that? Does it serve me? And what, what would I rather be? And then, okay, I can choose to wear my businesswoman identity. Because mm, I mean, so now that's, because I think that I, not I think, based off what she's saying, it's, it happens. So there's that, you, you have identities when you're not going to work, when you're in the workplace, when you're doing what you're doing. There's the leadership, let's just say, let's say the leadership identity with a, with a specific project. Yep. It happens, you've never learned how to be a leader, right? You didn't read leadership books or anything like that. How, do, how does an identity like that come to life? Like, how do you get that identity? Well, generally you get thrown into it. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different yeah, ways ideas <laughs> are created. And often, so identities are created, one, by other people, that, and they are enforced on us. So, for example, a mother-daughter. So I enforce on you the daughter identity. Okay. You don't have a choice. You are my daughter, and I call you that, and I treat you like that. It's enforced on you. Okay. So sometimes we have identities that are forced on us. Cool. by others. Okay. Gotcha. Sometimes we copy identities. So, you know, you, you go to a girl's 
um, private school and you see they all wear short shorts and they all have long blonde hair <laughs> and they all have a certain way that they talk and do things. Sounds like all girls private schools. <laughs> but they copy an identity. Mm, that's fascinating. And so, 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 and sometimes we choose identities. So, um, and depending on where we are in our life, so, you know, we, and, and then there's also cultural identities. We, identities get created by different cultures. So we grow up in a certain way and it's enforced on us by our culture. Okay. That's an, that, you see not that one. That, I think that one's a, a, we could go on for days with that one. Yes, we can go. Well, this topic is so broad, so we can. No, no, because I mean, so, because if you look at like, for example, in a workplace, there's a bunch of different people, right? Yep. Different cultures, different backgrounds, different everything. I come in with my enforced culture, like the culture that was enforced upon me. And I feel, this is my opinion. Sometimes I feel like people are stuck on that. This is who I am, this is what it is. And 100%. And so, and this is where it's people become unaware of their cultural identities. So we, we take, for example, you know, this time of year, we, you go into all the stores, there's Christmas decorations. Mm. So people that are, have grown up in that culture automatically go into that culture. People that didn't grow up in that culture are like, you know, we had our Christmas at Diwali, or we had our this, or mm. we had our that. Or, and, and so often people have very little respect for other people's cultures, cultures, identities, things that happen. But it's also being aware of everybody has different different identities. The biggest and most important thing to become aware of, and that's what you asked, is how do you become aware of the identities you are wearing? Mm. And you have to name them. And you have to look at them. Some people have a manipulating identity. We all have identities that are not very nice. Yep. Okay. But a manipulating identity can be used to create good and it can be used to create bad. If I use it to manipulate you, to get you to do something mm -hmm. you are absolutely terrified of doing, it is a positive identity that I'm using. Okay. The positive side of it. Yeah. If I'm using it, my manipulation to get you to do something I want you to do to serve me, mm -hmm. then it's not a great identity. Got you. Okay, so there's there's good and bad in, in all of them. Yeah. But it's just, are you aware of when you are using what? And can you name it? And once you've named it, can you get other people to help you start identifying it? Because that my grumpy mom identity, my kids will say, are you grumpy mom? Yeah. So now you, now you have the awareness that you are now grumpy. Correct. Because you may not... Ooh, okay, so if I now name them, my thousand, and I'm, I'm pretty okay, clear, you're not let's, saying... Let's just start with five. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> just for the purpose of this podcast, I know you're not saying you're going to sit there and name a thousand because it's going to take you a while. So you name five, and then you tell your family about the five, right? Or what? So it's clear, if you want to learn more about them, ask people, not necessarily family, but ask people who can help you in those identities to help you become aware of them. Okay. But you can also ask yourself, what, like, what identity am I wearing, or who am I? Mm. Interesting. And, and so, just by asking yourself that question, okay, so, huh, yeah, a bit grumpy now. Okay, I've got a podcast. Can't be grumpy. Or mm. well, what do I need? To, okay, go brush <laughs> your hair, splash some water on your face, and. Come out smiling and put on your, your teacher identity. Mm. You, you yeah, hundred percent. Most, but the average person today is not even aware that they can do that, that they can shift their identities. Well, would you say that it, that's because so much of society has been put on like being fake? Like, oh, you just you're faking it. It's not. That's not really how who you are or how you feel or if if that makes sense. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons for it. Mm. But I, I think the biggest thing is society is very absent at the moment. Yeah. We're not present to yeah. what what's going on. So we're very absent to even who we are or what we do or the moods we have, that sort of thing, the games we play. You know, most people are, are don't even realise what mood they're in. No. 
And so all those things, would you say that all of that is connected? Like yes. the games you play, the mood you're in, and the identity that mm -hmm. you have. They, they kind of flow through each other. Do you? Because my grumpy mom identity is, my mood is grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> and then I play a not so nice game because Ooh. I'm miserable and I'm telling everybody what to do and you need to listen to me mm. and who do you think you are and... It's causing chaos. <laughs> And then, oh, okay, now I can see how, and then that just ultimately it filters through everything. Yeah, man, and, and like you say, from the start of the morning, for example, that could ruin not just your own day, but everybody else around you's day, just based off the fact that you don't have the awareness of the, the fact that you're a grumpy mom right now. And and it's important. This is a, like a really complex subject, so there's a lot of moving pieces mm. so just because i go grumpy doesn't mean i go into grumpy mom identity okay because moods are separate from identities. identities okay so it's just important for for me to just put that in there it's just because i'm grumpy does not mean i'm in my grumpy, grumpy mom. mom identity mm. or just because i'm i don't know avoiding something doesn't mean i'm in my avoiding identity it might just be a mood so it's just understanding this is there's layers to this. Okay. But in terms of the question you asked is the identities we wear will definitely affect the moods, the games, the things we do, the actions, those kind of things. So it is important to, to just stop and ask yourself, what game am I playing? You know, what what is my mood level? Because sometimes you spot the mood and you go, Oh, don't want to be that and the mood will help you identify the identity. But sometimes they're not related. Okay, so, so you ask yourself the question, what game am I playing? Right? So mm -hmm. And how is that is that tied to identity? Because it can be it can be tied to identity. But it's also tied to mood. It it could, it could be. be. Not necessarily. Interesting. Because yeah, that, that's like a very interesting trickle down for me. So, the question that I've been wanting to ask, and it's like, uh, this is a tricky one, but as you guys like to say, offense is not taken. It's not, offense is not given, it's taken. It's taken. That offense one. is taken. That one. Right now, we mm -hmm. are in a space where I identify as, those are two different things, right? The identity <laughs> and identity. <laughs> So I'm going to ask this question. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see this one coming. <laughs> yes, I identify as, yes. <laughs> it's such a tricky question. <laughs> it's because I feel like I know the answer. But I want to hear it from you. Like, what is your take on it? Because based on what I'm understanding right now from an identity, right? It's something that is, like you said, it's been forced on you. It's been... It's or you've chosen, you've chosen it, it, but that doesn't, it's, it has nothing to do with, because I just want to also clarify that for anybody who's going to be watching this, because that's not what we're saying here. We're not saying, it, it, it's not the same as I identify as. No, it's definitely not. Okay. <laughs> so what's your question? Now, this one, that was actually the question, I got it out, and I think it's good to know that they are separate things, and to, just so that there is that understanding that, because generally I identify as, is I'm choosing to do this. Okay, you see, oh, you see, exactly. So I'm choosing to, I identify as a kitty. I'm choosing to identify as a kitty. Mm -hmm. I'm very aware that I'm choosing that. Mm. Okay. Your awareness is higher for what I identify as. Yes. Got you. Whereas what the identities we are talking about are identities that are generally in our subconscious that we are not even aware of that were created by us, maybe it was an identity to survive. So, you know, if you grew up in an abusive home, you go into that sort of um, identity that has minimal emotion, you hide everything, you don't want to... So in order to survive, you don't show any emotion. You don't, mm. you don't connect with anybody, you just... Or maybe it's a pretending identity. Yeah. So I'm pretending that everything's okay. Because I don't want anyone to know that I'm in an abusive home or mm -hmm. whatever it is. So I pretend. And of course, a pretending identity 
serves me as a child to survive. Okay, cool. because in order to survive, I have to pretend everything's okay. Mm -hmm. But now when I come, I grow up and I come into business, and now I'm pretending that my business is running well. I'm pretending that my reports are being done. Mm -hmm. I'm pretending that everything's a okay, so, and it's not. That identity no longer serves me. So that, in that regard, now it's not good. Now you've moved it. It's so, so essentially it served its purpose. Correct. Right? And you've got to let go of it, if that makes sense. 100% and have the awareness of it. So how would you let go of it? Well, that's why we use processing, is to clean up identities. <laughs> that's the, the power of processing, is you get to clean up and upgrade some of those identities. Um, so, in, you know, that's how I would help you clean it up. Um, different technologies would, I assume, do different things, but um, in terms of what we do, in terms of helping you, one is to help you spot some of those identities because, yeah, a lot of them are very subconscious and we're not even aware of them because they were created in order to survive or created in order to make something happen. So sometimes we're not even aware of the identities that have been created. Yeah, and actually just to say, like you're talking about using processing to, to clean up those identities. Like I had, that was last week when we had our, when I had my processing session and um, I had the realization that I use humor in uncomfortable situations that I want to get out of. I don't know if anybody else wants to get out of it, but I know <laughs> I want to get out of it, so I'm going to tell a joke, I'm going to do something funny. And once I had that awareness and I had that realization, I was like, okay, is this serving me? Right? And I had to make that decision of, I need to see if it is. Because the only way I really know is by putting it into play. And I feel like this morning's meeting was a prime example of when, of that. Very uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable. And I didn't use it. I didn't make a joke. I didn't say anything to try and deflect. Because I was like, if I do that, I feel as though I'm not going to learn. I'm not going to get the lessons from this meeting. I'm going to pull myself out. Yeah. So would you say that that's something that people do often, like pull them to pull themselves out of a situation to, to, to sort of, um, yeah, to stop themselves? Because you're speaking about the, the, oh, just say it now. Let's just say it, from like the, the hate identity. Mm -hmm. So I now, I've had a bad situation with the, with the taxi or whatever the case may be. I get home, I'm still in the same identity. So I'm now, I want to distance from my family. Mm -hmm. But you have zero awareness around that. And you're not even, you're not going to change it. How can I, and I think I've asked this, but how can I get better at that? So the, the biggest thing is having the awareness of that's what I've gone into. And, and so just like a, you, for example, you spoke about, you use humor to deflect. So now you have the awareness that you use humor to deflect. Now you have a choice. Before you crack the joke, you can go, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe let me stand in the heat, mm. which is what happened this morning. And now you're in a space where you're not deflecting and you're actually learning and you're going, oh, that wasn't so bad. It wasn't so uncomfortable. I survived. I managed. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you go, oh, okay, so where else am I doing that? And then you have that awareness and you can ask yourself, how do I use it? How do I get better? And there is a time and a place for humor and deflection. And, you know, especially it's a very powerful tool to use at Christmas with families. Mm. And humor is a great one. Best you know, one. crack jokes and deflect. But it's also important to be aware of that person that was trying to get their point across to go back to it at a more appropriate time when you're maybe one-on-one -on -one instead of when there's 10 people mm -hmm. around and everyone's chipping in with their opinion. So it is important to be able to go back to the person who asked the question or whatever it was before the humor came out. And I think that's what happens a lot of times people use, we don't actually go back and circle around and connect the the whole circle of the communication. Yeah. We throw humor in and then people are left like, 
I never got an answer. Like, it wasn't <laughs> useful, they didn't know, they cracked jokes, they made fun of it, but I don't actually know if anyone's did anyone serious. Hear me? Did anyone, like, did anyone take me seriously? Mm. Like, so it is important, especially with families, to make a note, be present, and go back to that point at a more appropriate time because often families blurt things out at the di Christmas dinner table. It's, it's not actually appropriate, but mm. so it, yeah, to answer your question. <laughs> All right, as you said, this is a this could go on for this could go on for days, a long, yes, long, long, it's long, a, long time, and, it, I, and it is, it's a very complex subject because. It, there's so many moving pieces to it, mm. but if you are aware of the identities, you know, just start off with look at some of the basic ones, and you know, it's just the daughter, the mother, the sister, the auntie, the you know, and especially this time of year, and then start to look at some of the things like the businesswoman, the or businessman, or you know, the salesperson, or the accountant, or the you know, the numbers person, look at all the different things you go into and just, you know, start, maybe start to name them and go, okay, when I'm at work, I wear this identity. When I'm at home, I wear this one. When I'm with my, you know, extended family, I wear this one. When I'm with my parents, I wear this one. Okay, cool. Well, am I aware of which one does what? And, you know, extreme cases, when I go into the door to one, I go into the Thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. You know, yeah. are you gonna pay for me? Are you gonna? And, <laughs> and you know, sometimes that's beneficial, and sometimes you're actually abusing it, and sometimes mm -hmm. it makes you feel worse getting mom and dad to pay for stuff, and you're thirty. And <laughs> yeah. So it's just having the awareness of what you actually, the behaviors that you have, and do you like them, and what do. So it's like, okay, cool, when I, when I become the daughter, this is what I do. Okay, I go into this, everyone must pay for me. Well, where else do I do that? Ooh. Do I do that at work? My boss must pay for me. Interesting. And it's just having that awareness and go, okay, well, is it a behavior I like? No, well, not really. I, I like to stand on my own two feet. I like mm. to pay my own way. I like to, you know, do things. So it's having that awareness of, what do I go into when and is it serving me? Okay, great, it's not serving me. So, huh, I'm wearing that daughter identity again. What would I rather be wearing? And change it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Something you said there which was actually really fascinating was the behaviors connected to the identities. Ah, oh, and I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. We didn't touch on that. <laughs> well, and, and that's essentially the biggest thing that mm -hmm. it is. It's what behaviors do you go into? So I talk about the grumpy mom. What are my behaviors? Yeah. I'm grumpy and everyone must move out of my way and do what I say. Otherwise, yeah. you know, all hell's going to break loose. And then I come to work and do the same thing. It's the behavior that you're looking for. Mm. And But like you said, sometimes that can be good. That can be, it can be yes. a useful tool. To get people, like I should say, grumpy mom from home to work, to get people to do what you need them to do in that moment. This is what I need to be right now because if I'm going to be sweet mom, it's not going to get done. Correct. So it's the behaviors associated mm. with it and the mood levels and the, the games that get played within that. But what are the behaviors? Mm. Whew! Made me sweat. <laughs> but it, it is, once you have the awareness, then it makes life so much easier, like when you meet with family, because now you're aware of the different identities you go into and go, I am not going to be manipulated by my family. Mm. I get manipulated by my family because I go into the whatever, the weak identity. Yeah. I'm going to stay in my this identity. And in order to do that, if I have to go, my husband says no. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's then happening. That's what's happening. Yeah. But I'm aware that my family has that power over me. Mm. Because those are the behaviors that I have when I'm with them. And they, they, and it's almost, so I feel like it's not like they bring it out 
you bring it out to protect yourself? Well, to... it's it's a bit of both. Okay. So it can be both. So, but it's subconscious. Mm. So we're not even Nobody's, aware that yeah, we yeah. even do that. Nobody sits in there going, "Oh, we're gonna." I'm thinking about making him the weak identity today. <laughs> That's no. just not happening. And and the, often people will say, "I don't understand. Why do I always get you know, I don't know." red zone clients, the people that never pay me. It's like, well, because that's what you attract, because people know that they can walk all over you. Mm. They can feel it, they can smell it, they're looking for people that they can walk all over. Definitely. And if you're not aware of that, you won't ever change it. Mm. You don't need change it once you have the awareness. Yep. Any final thoughts before we wrap up this fascinating topic? I think the biggest thing is just start, take note of your behavior and how you behave with different people when you go out with your mates and your drinking buddies, what behavior, what identity do you go into? Mm, that's a big one. <laughs> big one. Girls too. Mm. Boys and girls. Yeah. And so it is just have that awareness, what identity and what is the identity you want to be in? Because often, you know, we go into, we choose the wrong identity out of spite. Well, Stuff you <laughs> <laughs> and and go. I'm not gonna. I'm not, you know. You and I think that's one of the reasons why romance movies do so well is because people go into these identities and then they walk away and they go, oh, mm. so bad. Yeah. I don't. I didn't really mean that. Mm. And then oh, you were the one all along. Yeah. <laughs> Chose the identity of an asshole, and now you, you've tried to fix it. Ah, bad. And and so it is having that awareness that what identity are you wearing, and is it one you want to wear? Are you wearing a love identity or a hate identity? When you should be wearing a different one. Yeah. Great. So. Yeah, that's fascinating because it, it, it's about when it's when it's needed and how you utilize it. I think. Yeah. But, but also just having the awareness around it. Without the awareness, you can't do anything. You, without the awareness, you're basically just the walking dead. You're just doing what you do. You're doing you just, through the motions. Yeah, you just try, you just, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of the Uncovering Greatness podcast. Thank you for watching, for joining us, for spending some time with us. It has been really, really awesome. Um, yes, if you guys want to know or need to know anything from Nicole, you can send an email, correct? Mm -hmm. Nicole at uncoveringgreatness.co.za. Um, Nicole also has something called the Green Zone Daily Ritual Challenge, um, which is on our website, www.uncoveringgreatness.co.za. It is free of charge. Um, I think it, it's not going to help you with identities specifically, but it will help you with like moods and, we'll, and with gratitude and all those things that are very necessary during this time of year um, because I, I'm speaking for myself, sometimes I don't take the time to remember what I'm grateful for during this time of year. So that is there. We have three more circle of influences left for 2024 and then next year we will be moving to Entrepreneur Hangout once a month breakfast. Barry and Nicole will be teaching. We will have special guests. Whew. It's, Very exciting. It's going to be awesome. And yeah, we've got a lot going on. We've got a lot happening. But more than that, we will continue to do the podcast once a week. You will get the subscriber edition. You will get the YouTube version. So stay tuned. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Nicole, for your time and your knowledge. It has been truly awesome to learn and understand identities more. And yeah, we will see you next week. And we will see you next week next as well. Thank you. Bye.